my dear respected honored brothers and elders alhamdulillah we are in the month of rabiul awwal and this month is famous in the muslim community due to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam coming into this world coming into the existence of this world in this very month my dear respected brothers and elders we are very fortunate we are very blessed and this is big mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as a ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanallah we did not apply that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh allah make us among the ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but anbiya ikram they used to have the wish and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh allah make us among the ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this much big mercy and bounty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon us but now it is it is disheartening to see and depressing to see that we feel guilty that i am muslim sometimes because this is because of the weakness of our iman my dear respected brothers and elders if someone get test of real iman like rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the requirement is the test of the iman so he said zaqa tu'ma al-iman man radiya billahi rabba wa bil islam dina wa bi muhammadin nabiyya that person got the real test of the iman who radiya billahi rabba that he <coughs> that he pleased with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his lord and his creator as his cherisher as his nourisher as his sustainer wa bil islam dina wa bi muhammadin nabiyya and the second is he is pleased as muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his messenger his prophet his guide that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to you the guide and the mercy from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and that guide is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam For that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said follow that guide atiu Allah wa atiu Rasul follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow that guide who is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he will guide you towards the jannah towards the sirat e mustaqim and this that sirat e mustaqim will take you into the jannah like once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he draw a line and then he put other lines parallel to that line and he said to the sahaba ikram this straight line is sirat e mustaqim and these other lines which are going here and there those are not sirat e mustaqim it will take you towards the jahannam and on each and every corner shaitan is waiting for you and he want to prey upon you and take you to the hell fire So my dear respected brothers and elders 
we are the ummah of distinguished nabi the beloved of all the nabi the khatamun nabiyin muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself say laqad manna allah ala al mu'minin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never use this word manna allah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala best told allah subhanahu wa ta'ala best blessed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say this manna word at any word. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he favor you <coughs> because he is giving you rain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you because he is giving you food, water, oxygen, oxygen, anything, whatever you require. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never said that I favor you by giving this all things to you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this word man Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored upon you on one occasion and that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said laqad man Allah ala al-mu'mineen iz ba'atha fihim rasoola that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored you when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent rasool a messenger among you yatlu alayhim ayati and what are the responsibilities and duties of that messenger he said yatlu alayhim ayati that messenger is reading and reciting doing the tilawa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses wa yuzakkihim and the second thing he does he purifies you like how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he purified if you if you read to the history and if you get uh, you know what was going on before rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam around the world not only in the arabian peninsula but around the world in rome in uh, in faras uh, uh, in uh, sham whatever the all the communities were living if you see what was going on you will find there was no humanity in the name of human those times human were worst than the predators if you study those material and you imagine if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not been sent rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not have been sent this quran and this guidance for us what happened If you take out the Islam and its teaching you will find everywhere is the darkness Arab themselves it is said they used to bury their daughters alive wa idhal mawudatu su'ilat bi ayyi dhanbin qutilat and on the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask those girls who were buried alive bi ayyi dhanbin qutilat what was your crime because of that you was killed they will be asked wa idha bushira ahaduhum bil untha dalla wajhuhu muswaddan wa huwa kazim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and when they have been given the glad tiding of the birth of the female zalla wajhuhu muswaddan his face become dark black 
and he will be in full of rage full of anger and also if you read to the hadith which is narrated in siha that Sufi, Abu Sufyan who was not a Muslim yet when the king of Rome he called him and he asked about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said the truth and the speech of Hazrat Jafar ibn uh, Abi Talib at the king of Habsha you will find that he is saying that we don't have respect for each other and the strong amongst us he swallow he pray on the weaker section of um, among us and women was not having any value and you know daughters were buried alive this was the situation and if you look at the history of a roman empire you will find same you know worse than jungle raj was then jungle kingdom <clears throat> in this time at that time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent the prophet and in less than 23 years he made them a good example a lighthouse for other people to get guidance from them and he himself announced ashabi kan nujun that my companions they are like the stars whoever you follow you will be guided and my dear respected brothers and elders this is you know sometimes negligence from our, from us that we don't want to read the seerah we don't want to read the uh, history and life and legacy of Sahaba Ikram as well how much they sacrificed to, to safeguard this deen and because of their sacrifices this deen reached to us in this form today so that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he recites upon them the ayat of the Quran When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was staying in Mecca, he did not migrate yet. When he used to do the tilawat of the Quran in the courtyard of uh, Kaaba, holy Kaaba, the shayateen, big sh uh, shayateen, like Abu Jahl and other people, they used to come and listen to the tilawat of the holy Quran. And when they find each other and they say, yeah, we like his recitation, the words. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he kept sweetness in the recitation of the Quran as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put an effect of the Quran when we recite it. <clears throat> but it affects, yudhillu bihi kathira wa yahdi bihi kathira. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put uh, astray so many people and he put on the right path so many people, some of them. So when, when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala <coughs> he reached to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the intention of killing him with the sword in his hand. So before he reached there, he find out that his brother-in-law and sister, they accepted Islam. So when Hazrat Musab ibn Umair, he recited verses of the Quran, he started crying and he said, I want to go and accept the deen of Rasulullah This is the impact and effect of recitation of the Holy Quran. So the Rasulullah has been sent to recite the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on to the people and also wa him and purify them. So he purified them from inside and outside. Uh, they became 
very near and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah pleased with them. For that whenever we said the name, we, we take the name of any companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we say radiyallahu an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with him. Wa yu'allimuhumu al-kitab wal hikmah and the another duties, responsibilities that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given is wa yu'allimuhumu al-kitab and he teaches them the book. Teaching the book. Which book? The divine book. The noble book. The holy book. The Quran which was revealed on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And not only Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He taught us the book, but also He taught us وَالْحِكْمَةِ and, the, uh, and uh, talks of the wisdom. And the matters of the wisdom as well. And even though before that they were in open, uh, <coughs> open dhalal, they were asked to open, they were not on the straight path. 